Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to rig a tight skirt. Okay, so a couple of things when you're rigging skirts that you want to you want to make sure is that you want to make sure. <clears throat> let me go to the this view. You want to make sure that you have an edge loop that runs straight up the middle exactly halfway between the legs. That's where this the, the grid comes in. It's at the this exact center. So whatever you need to do, if you need to select vertices and snap them to the grid so that they're straight up and down, that is awesome. That's what you need to do. If you don't, it makes rigging so much harder. Um, I also like to put two more edge loops pretty close to it um, that are just barely on the inside of the thighs. So if you need to insert an edge loop, do that on the front and on the back. And is what you want to do, which is what you want to have to start with. Like I said, this is straight up the middle. Okay, that's going to make your life so much easier. And even though these are pretty close together, uh, this this mesh is only 589. I'm 98 um, vertices. It's a very efficient mesh. So adding these two edge loops here isn't any big deal. Okay. So first thing you want to do is, like you said, after you've, you know, freeze transformation, you make sure everything's at zero, one, one, and one. Everything's good. Um, and you deleted history uh, on your mesh just to be on the safe side. It's always good to delete the history as you go along. We're going to select the hierarchy. We're going to shift select our mesh. We are going to smooth bind scan. These are the settings that I always use. Maximum influence, that's the number of maximum number of joints that can influence any one vertex. And four is the max in second life. Turn off allow multiple bind poses. Um, because my star doesn't like multiple bind poses. Uh, maintain max influence is good. Uh, color a skeleton is okay. Turn off, remove unused influences, and then just click apply and close. Okay, so now this is rigged, but it's a default rig. It doesn't have the weight of the of the avatar, so we're not really going to even be using the one set we just created. So you select an object mode. You select the the avatar body. Shift select the skirt or your clothes. My star. Uh, skin weight tools, copy skin weights, and these are the ones that I use, the settings I use. Click copy, and now you can see she work, she walks much better. Okay, but except for in between the legs, you know you got that that real hard edge there. See, this is what this this is that second edge. This is the center edge here. This is that second edge. This is what I mean. We need this second edge to help smooth and round this round this out. So how do we do that? Okay. So uh, I'm going to come back here in this, and I am going to go into vertex. And I'm just going to select this one here right here in the middle, it's in the front. Open up Max Skin Weights tool. You definitely want to get Max Skin Weights tool. You want to look for either right upper leg or left upper leg. Select it and click one here. That makes it 100%. So it gets rid of the other weights that were on there, the other bones. And then we want to find the left upper leg. That one's hand. Okay, there's the left upper leg, and you go 50%. So now these are 50-50. And then copy it. Click Copy. Now what we can do, make sure that um, your camera base selection is turned off so that we can select all these vertices that are between the legs up to that point, but just the center ones. Okay, then you can click Paste. Okay, now they all have 50-50. That will make sure that these vertices always stay halfway between whatever position this leg is in, the left right leg, 
and whatever this leg is in. Okay, then what we can do is if you shift select, actually we can do shift select, whoa, stop it. We can, uh, why isn't that, okay, let's turn the body off. Why isn't it allowing me to... Okay. There we go. Okay, so I shift selected these, so it deselected the ones in the center, and it selected these on the left and on the right. Okay, now we can bring the body back. And we can come back to here. And this is the next tool you're going to want to get is you can do the smooth, you can do the paint skin weights and you're going to be wanting to uh, smooth the influences of the left and right leg um, on these vertices. You could do that with the paint skin weights tool, but I'll tell you Brave Rabbit is so much better and easier. So we're going to go to rigging, scan. This is the Brave Rabbit tool right here. I want to see the options. And then we can simply click flood. See? I just click the flood button. Click, 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 click. Okay. Oh, went a little bit too much. So I'm going to control Z back. Just one click. And then I can control... Oh, yeah, we've got to go back to select mode. Controls. Come on. I don't know why it's not letting me deselect those, but okay. Why won't it let me deselect them? There we go. And then I'm just going to click here to get back that tool, the Brave Rabbit, and can click it a couple more times. Okay, you can even expand the selection a little bit. But no, we do not want... Whoops. Come on. We do not want these. These are those center... Vertex. We don't want to mess with those. And then we can smooth that a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now these here. Oh, and, and then if you um, hold down control, you can deselect with the paint by it turns into a paintbrush. Okay, and you can you can either flood smooth or you can use the paintbrush. Um, just make sure your size is small enough. Lots of times the default it's way up here and it's huge, so you can see it's point zero two one, and then just left mouse button and smooth it. Okay. Now we have a little bit of a 
problem there. That's not that big of a deal. If you go back into vertex mode and you select that vertex, you can come in here <coughs> and I would say you want to increase the uh, the right upper leg because this is a right leg, right upper leg. And we're just going to increase it. So we selected right upper leg there. And if we're going to increase it by just a scale by just a little bit, one click, two clicks, three clicks, and that looks good. And this one doesn't seem to have that problem. So we didn't have to do it on the other side. And that's just about as good as it's going to get. You could try smoothing it a bit more. But I think that's about as good as it's going to get. You could... Uh, Come here to Vertex and say, uh, if you increase the right upper leg, it's going to uh, pop up more. If you increase the left upper leg, it'll come down a little bit more because the left leg is pulling it back. left upper leg. So you could really get in here. And you can do the same thing with this side. Let's do these. Go right upper leg and increase the and a bit more. Okay, and frame one is T pose, legs apart, A pose, you know, with her, you know, these are the different poses. Um, okay, so once you are happy with your weights, uh, run, these are the other, the other scripts, like I said, that are in that description that you want to get five or more. This will check to see if your if your mesh has more than five vertex uh, on it. Um, I mean more than not five vertex, more than five joints influencing any single vertex. If there is, it will it will highlight it, it will select it. Um, and it will tell you how many down here it will say how many uh, how many joints, how many vertices have more than four joints influencing them. If there is none, then great, you're good to go. If there is some, then run 4 max. You just click 4 max and it will prune the weights and it does a really, really nice job. Um, often what I'll do is um, I will increase her body fat and then I'll, I'll run 4 max and see if there's any, any large changes, you know. Now this is pretty good. Now she has a little bit of poke through right here. I could insert an edge loop right here and that would take care of that, but that's only when she's set to the to the max. You can see that's quite quite a bit. I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, and you definitely want to make sure that you don't have four uh, more than four joints influencing the vertices, even though you set it to four max when you did the smooth bind. It happens when you smooth the weights. It happens even when you paint smooth weights. Uh, you'll end up sometimes with with more uh, than four four vertices, four joints influencing the vertices, or some of the vertices. And then what will happen is if you upload that to Second Life, Second Life will prune the weights for you. And lots of times when they prune the weights, they really mess up the weights. And then you'll upload it and you'll wear it and you'll say, "Hey, it looked so much better in Maya than it does here." That's why.
That's why, because you have a lot of vertices that have more than uh, four joints influencing it. And uh, so, yeah, so that's basically how to rig a skirt. Uh, the skirt is ready to export out. And, oh, before you export it out, yeah, definitely want to remove unused influences. And that removed 117. Because we remember, we rigged it to all the bones in the skeleton. Why do you rig it to all the bones in the skeleton? Um, because when you copy weights over, you, you're not exactly sure what this is all weighted to in this area. You can probably have a pretty good idea, but what if you're wrong? What if you miss a bone when you're selecting the bones to rig your mesh to? It's just easier to rig all to all the bones in the skeleton and do remove unused influences. If I hadn't done remove un unused influences, it would have been, the mesh would have been rigged to 130 bones. And you can only have a single mesh rigged to 110 bones max. So you would get the, the skin weights would be grayed out when you went to upload it to Second Life. So if you ever get that, if you ever try to upload a mesh that is rigged to Second Life and you're not allowed to include, you know, the, the selection, the option to include, uh, skin, uh, skin weights or whatever, um, uh, is grayed out, it's 99% of the time it's because you didn't remove unused influences and your mesh has too many, been rigged to too many bones. Uh, the only other possibility is if you had something in your, like you had a bone that was misnamed, even if it's the capitalization is, is wrong. Um, uh, like M pelvis is lowercase m, uppercase p, and then the rest all the rest of the letters, uh, E-V-I-S, uh, E-V-L-I-S, is that how you spell it? <laughs> pelvis, P-E-L-V-I-S, um, uh, yeah, P-E-L-V-I-S, yes. If it's not, if it's not this capital P and this lower m and these lowercase uh, letters, even if it's spelled correctly, if the capitalization is off, then it will not recognize it it will so it's that picky that you have to have all the bones named properly with the correct capitalization uh, for the type of bone it is and you know so that is a possibility um uh if the, if the but like i said 99 percent of the time it's because you have too many bones in your skin cluster you you know so remove unused influences then export out your um your uh dae um and, uh, and away you go. So awesome. Okay. So that's how to rig a tight skirt, you know, some basic rigging of a tight skirt. And, um, yeah, you'll never quite get off of this wrap around look. Uh, it's just unavoidable. You know, I know real clothes in real life don't do that, but there's just no way around it as far as rigging is concerned, at least not just, you know, with traditional type of rigging, which is that's that's what this is. Um, so that's about as good as it's going to get. So awesome. Alrighty. Uh, well, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. Bye-bye.